Okay, so really briefly, we're going to look at the postulates of the kinetic molecular theory. Um, I need you to have a working knowledge of this. I don't need you to memorize. Number one is this. Number two is this. You're going to utilize this information, which most of which is a really straightforward, common sense kind of thing. Um, and a lot of them you're going to go, duh. But you can utilize this information to answer questions about pretty much any gas law. You can prove any gas law by us utilizing these postulates. Um, so looking at this, number one, I'm going to kind of read them to you and we'll talk about them. Gas consists of tiny microscopic molecules. So they're microscopic, yeah, pretty much, which are in continuous random motion. Does that sound legit? What do you think the most important part about that statement is? The tiny molecules? Continuous random motion. And what allows these molecules to move around so well? Not energy. The, the fact, I heard it kind of, the empty space. The fact that these things are so spread out, that allows them to move so randomly. And that goes along with number two. The distance between the molecules is large compared with the size of the molecules themselves. The volume occupied by a gas consists mostly of empty space. And here's something I need you to understand about gases. Let's pretend there's four equal moles of gases in the volume of this room. Okay? So we'll say there's four different gases, gas A, B, C, D. All four gases have the same volume in this room, which is the volume of this room. Gases are going to spread out as far as they can under the confines of whatever container they're in, or confines, whatever container they're in. So if we talk about the volume, we don't say that this room has a fourth of volume of A, a fourth of B, a fourth of C, and a fourth of D. When we introduce a gas into a system, it's spread out entirely. It doesn't take away space from another gas. Why is that? It's because of number two. There is so much room between these molecules that that can happen. So does that make sense? So even though volume stays the same, when we add gases, what does change? Pressure, right? Because think about total pressure in the, in the system. What is the total pressure in this room if we have gas A, B, C, and D? The sum of the... What's the fancy? Not partial pressures of A, B, C, and D. And whose law was that? Dalton's. Okay, so is everyone good with number two? All right, so we did one and two. Number three goes along with something you kind of had to do for your pre-lab, and it was that Van der Waals equation that you had to look up. Did you all look that up? The Van der Waals equation we're going to talk about in a lot more detail. I think my mic might be dying in a lot more detail on um, Tuesday, and it's really a measure of molecules' attractiveness for one another and how much volume the actual molecule takes up. Um, so an ideal gas, molecules should not be attracted to one another. Since they should not be attracted to one another, what does that allow them to do? Spread out more. Exactly. Okay. Um, another important thing about these molecules is that they move in straight lines in all directions, colliding frequently with the walls of the containers. What I underline, there's a one word to describe all of that. What is it? Louder, Liam. Pressure. That's what pressure is. I've got a beeping going on in my ear. I think this is going to die. I hope it makes it. So you can utilize this definition of pressure to help prove different gas laws. So I want you to refer to this definition of pressure quite a bit. Pressure is the force exerted when that happens. Number five, no energy is lost by the collision of gas molecules with one another. So what that means is as gases move around, the collisions are perfectly elastic. What happens if every time a gas molecule would hit, energy would be lost? What are some things that would happen? They'd slow down, which would be what? Do what? Change states. We'd lose energy, we'd go to liquid, and then we'd go to solid eventually. So yeah, good thing. Good thing none of this happens. And then the very last 
postulate is, and this is really important, and you're going to cover it in physics quite a bit at some point, the average kinetic energy for molecules of gases is the same at the same temperature. So all gases in this room, because we're all of them are at the same temperature, have the same average kinetic energy. And um, 3 halves RT is the formula for that. You don't need to know it yet. We're going to talk about it later. But this is just to show you the energy of the molecule, the kinetic energy, is directly related to the temperature. And that's it. It doesn't matter what molecules they are or how many there are. It has to do with their average energy. Again, all of that is dependent upon the fact that they're all so spread out far apart. Okay? This is just one of those things you need to know because sometimes they throw it at you and they want to know a little bit about ideal gases. Ideal gases are most ideal when they're at high temperatures and low pressures. We like ideal gases that are spread out really far apart and have no attractive forces. So how does high temperature make that happen? Moving quickly, they're spreading out because they have a higher kinetic energy. And then low pressure. Why does the low pressure allow that? Fewer collisions, right? Fewer collisions. Low pressure means there's fewer collisions. And therefore, again, the spreading out is allowed to happen. And then that's when gases are most ideal, least attractive forces spread out furthest. So how you can apply this would be answering a question like this. Using the postulates of the kinetic molecular theory, explain why pressure increases as temperature increases. So as temperature increases, what happens? Thinking back to what we did, you can't just say pressure increases. We're proving it. What's the first thing that happens when temperature increases? Think back like two seconds ago. Yes, average kinetic energy increases. As average kinetic energy increases, what happens? OK, rate. But I'm, I'm going to take it a step further. What if I told you guys to, every single one of you, to stand up and start walking around the room? And then all of a sudden, I'm going to increase your kinetic energy and yell, run! And you all are going to start to run. What happens? More collisions. As average kinetic energy increases, collisions between molecules and the sides of the container. So I'm OK, though, um, Mr. Dempsey, if you want to say as average kinetic energy increases, your rate increases, because that's true. The rate of the movement increases, which causes more collisions. So if you want to add that, that's fine. Collisions between molecules.